afternoon and welcome to Business Incorporated live from Lagos. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwabu. Today on the show, Nigeria ranks 127th out of 138 countries in the World Economic Competitiveness Index 2016 to 2017. And South African telecoms giant MTN denies allegation that it had illegally repatriated $13.92 billion from Nigeria. Plus, South Africa-based retail and furniture group Stenoff issues new shares to finance a string of acquisitions abroad. A rare case of an African nation drastically boosting its competitiveness is Rwanda. This is contained in the Global Competitiveness Report released by the World Economic Forum today. The country in sub-Saharan Africa has risen six places, coming in at 52. It is closing in on the region's leaders, Mauritius and South Africa, leaving Kenya and Nigeria behind. Globally, Switzerland, as in the previous year, is top of the table in 2016, narrowly beating Singapore and the United States, which occupy the second and third places each. The report says a decade of protectionist economic policies has reduced the ability of most countries across the world to achieve healthy growth and innovation. The Global Competitiveness Index is based on West Executive Opinion Survey, a poll conducted among more than 10,000 business leaders from all over the world who give their opinions on a range of socio-economic issues such as institutions, infrastructure, labor market, education and so on. In the meantime, Nigeria is ranked 127th out of 138 countries surveyed in the World Economic Competitiveness Report 2016 to 2017. Our report, which was put together by the World Economic Forum, explains that Nigeria fell three places on the index due to the fall in commodity prices and weaker macroeconomic environment. According to the forum, Government deficit has almost doubled since last year, and national savings has significantly suffered worsening the current account position. WEF believes access to finance will remain difficult for many businesses as financial authorities have retained restrictions on access to the interbank market despite the central bank ending its currency peg. Other factors holding back Nigeria's competitiveness include an underdeveloped, underdeveloped infrastructure, insufficient health and primary education, and the poor quality and quantity of higher education and training. And moving on now to global markets um, in Europe. Deutsche Bank shares rose today, bouncing back after several sessions of heavy selling. Now, this comes after it was asked to pay a settlement by the U.S. Department of Justice and speculation that it was seeking help from the German government. Why are investors scrambling for Deutsche Bank shares today? Let's find out from my colleague at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, Javier Agredes. Good afternoon, Javier. Thank you very much for joining us today. Now, Deutsche Bank um, is in the news again. The shares rebounded from sharp losses today. What factors contributed to that and how sustainable will that be? Well, on the one hand, of course, uh, when we see tremendous losses in one day, it is uh, not that abnormal to see a slight recovery the next day, even though that definitely does not mean that there's any good news coming Deutsche Bank's way anytime soon. The only thing that we saw today that uh, was supposed to calm investors a little bit, at least, was uh, a statement by uh, Deutsche Bank CEO John Kryan saying that uh, he did not request the German government to help out Deutsche Bank and that he doesn't think that the situation situation of the bank is as bad as everyone thinks. Now, everyone wants to believe him, but on the other hand, there are still many cases that have not been completed at Deutsche Bank. We do not know how high the fines are going to be that are coming Deutsche Bank's way. So all in all, the situation is and will continue to be very critical. Now, well, of course, um, looking behind you there, we can see the DAX, of course, tilting downwards. And in other words, uh, that um, brighter note on Deutsche Bank today didn't really help um, DAX today. 
Anyway, while Deutsche Bank is battling its own crisis, Royal Bank of Scotland is also dealing with its own. The bank has agreed to pay $1.1 billion to settle lawsuits in the U.S. What are the investors saying about this? One would wonder if, if this is a war against the bank. Well, um, perhaps we could not call it a war directly, but it is true that we are seeing the before and the after of the financial crisis. Before the financial crisis, many banks essentially did whatever they wanted, and some of those activities led to the financial crisis, as we all know. So it is, of course, uh, the case uh, that now we have authorities and regulators uh, keeping a very close eye on what the banks are doing. And not, don't forget that many banks internationally were rescued after the financial crisis and others fusion so there are less players in the market and that is why um, what we are seeing now is banks uh, trying to be a little bit more careful about uh, which activities they actually perform um, it's also important to remember that when we see these cases and these fines uh, many of the cases are um, activities which were not illegal necessarily but that does not mean that they are ethically correct and that is perhaps uh, one of the lessons that we've learned here uh, so investors probably uh, of course do not like the fact that the banks are losing money, one billion dollars is of course a high amount, but on the other hand, if that's going to lead to more transparency and to more secure banks in the future and to more um, ethical transactions for the companies as well and for the clients, well, that definitely should be a good thing. Now, U.S. bank Wells Fargo is also not left out in the scandal trailing the banking sector. The chief executive will forfeit $41 million in bonuses Will that lift investors' confidence in the bank in any way after it has been accused of illegal practices? What is the talk out there concerning this? Well, you know, that is uh, yet another case where we saw a bank that was uh, accused and that had a ruined reputation. And it is true that the salaries of the top executives of the banks uh, sometimes seem outrageous, especially for a taxpayer that, um, again, was in some cases uh, forced uh, to bail out these banks. So um, when we see a case like this where a top executive is, uh, will, will not receive those uh, heavy amounts of money, well, then uh, that probably is a sign that the bank is trying to be more responsible with its finances. On the other hand, of course, you could say that's how the business work or it works, or at least used to work. This executive has been in the bank for a very, very long time. Um, uh, he now has to uh, at least uh, say goodbye to one-third of the money that he generated for Wells Fargo in the first place. But again, this comes in hand with what I was saying uh, before. It is a, a, a very close uh, watching of the bank's activities and the banks also being more careful to project an image of responsibility and of ethical work. Right, thank you very much, Javier. I would have to let you go at this point. Thank you for your time. Moving on now to Asia, markets there finished mixed with um, Japanese shares selling off amid a relatively stronger yen. The Nikkei 225 closed down 218.53 points, while the Topics Index laid 1.37%. Australia's ASX 200 closed off 6.50 points. In South Korea, the Kospi finished down 0.47%. In Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index fell 0.12% by late afternoon trade. Mainland Chinese shares also ended lower, with the Shanghai Composite closing down 10.04 points, while the Shenzhen Composite was down 0.15%. And Saudi Arabia has given the strongest indication it's ready to compromise with regional rival Iran, potentially paving the way for the first limit on oil production in two years, although a deal is unlikely until OPEC's next meeting in November. Khalid Al-Fali, who inherited a chronically oversupplied oil market when he was appointed Saudi Energy Minister in April, appeared to show more flexibility towards Tehran, saying that Iran, Libya and Nigeria should be allowed to produce at the maximum levels that make sense. As OPEC headed into informal talks in Algiers today, they have now two months to resolve differences over production limits if they want to secure an agreement that could prevent another year of oversupply on the oil market.
We'll take a quick break now. When we return, South Africa-based retail and furniture group Stainoff issues new shares. Details in a moment. To stay with us.